Okay. All right. So let's look at Texas because I saw Texas quite a bit. So this is the website that I'm at and it's called prepare to pass. And I'm going to put it in the chat box right now. So it's prepare to pass slash requirements. And this is where we can, and this is from Excel. Now it doesn't matter who you're using, whether you're using um, Excel, Kaplan, AD Banker, ExamFX, whatever. It doesn't matter who you're using, you can still use this website to know how many questions will be coming from each chapter. So you just scroll down and then you pick your state. So we're gonna start with Texas because there is a lot, I, that was the most biggest one I saw. Now, the first part of this will tell you what, what it is you have to do. Some states require that you complete your quizzes and exams and some don't. Um, but when you have a course with Excel, they will lock your, they will force you to do everything. Some, some courses don't require you to do the things you don't have to do. So, um, but they'll tell you the beginning of your requirements. Then when you keep scrolling, scroll, 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 you get to the exam, um, the exam outlines. This is what is gonna tell you how many questions are coming from each section or chapter of the exam. So we are doing um, property and casualties. So I'm gonna scroll here. So we see um, this is uh, the casualty exam, property exam, and it, so it breaks it down. And then over here is where it shows you on this side right here, it shows you um, how many uh, are the, the, the exact exam. So this is the personal lines exam and the P, PNC exam. And this shows you the number of questions and this shows you the percent. It's not different, it's just showing you, I, I look at question count because that makes you know more sense to me. Like how many questions are coming from this chapter, 13. So on the personal lines exam, so if you're doing, there's property and casualty, which is home, auto and commercial. And then there's personal lines, which is home and auto. So, so property and casualty includes personal lines. So if you're doing property and casualty, you're already covering the personal lines material. Um, and if you're not doing personal lines, you are doing the full property casualty, you, you have that commercial component. But so you either are doing the personal lines exam or you're doing property and casualty, so whichever you are. And then it's telling you how many questions are coming from each chapter. So in Texas, you have types of policy bonds and related terms. This is, the, this is casualty. So these are casualty policies. So th that means um, auto insurance, liability insurance, um, CGL, um, what occur, you know, occurrence versus claims made, things like that. That's the casualty side. Workers' comp is also casualty. So that's the casualty side. In personal lines, you will have 13 questions from that chapter. In property and casualty, you'll have 25. And you can see that that's 13% of the exam in personal, 19% in property. No. Then you have insurance terms and related concepts. This is like the general insurance chapter. What are the two types of risk? What is the law of large numbers? What are the methods of handling risk? Sharing, transfer, avoidance, retention, reduction. Um, all the like basic general insurance terms and concepts. That makes up 14 of the questions in personal, 14 in property and casualty. Then you have policy provisions. This is all about the actual structure of the policy itself. So like um, the declaration page, the insuring agreement, the exclusions, the endorsements, the additional and supplementary coverage. That's the policy and provisions. Now, these two chapters, insurance terms and related concepts and policy provisions and contract law. And I know we're talking about Texas, but if, you're, if you were to click right now, so let me just clarify something real quick. So let me show you like, um, what, it was, what is another state? <clears throat> I need to find another one that's um, like Texas. I think Missouri. Missouri. Let me, yeah, let me look at Missouri real quick. Um, and I'll show you the difference so you can see what I mean. Okay, so look at Missouri and see how it has the same, uh, oh no, that's life and health right here. It has the same chapter titles. So Texas, and because they're both, that's because they're both Pearson View, Pearson View. They will look the same, 
And so everything I'm saying for Texas about the, these chapter titles are the same for you. But you could be in a prometric state, which is different. So let me show you a prometric state, for example. So let me look at Arizona. And you scroll down to property and casualty. Look at the chapter titles, how different they are. So you're either going to be in a state that looks like this, where the chapter titles are all broken up, or you're going to be in a state like this, where they're not broken up. That's the two main types of tests. So go to the Excel website right now, the prepare to pass.com, and I put it in the chat box and I'll do it again. So put it in the chat box, chat box, chat box, putting it in the chat box. So click on that right now on your own device, go to your own state. So if you're in any other state, let's say you're in Tennessee, you're going to scroll and see if you are, if you are Pearson or Prometric. See how Arizona was? Prometric. So pay attention. I'm going to do one Pearson explanation using Texas, and then I will do one Prometric explanation using Arizona. And then if you have any specific questions about your state breakdown, you can let me know. But everything I'm saying for Texas, as I am explaining Texas, will work for any other Pearson view. Is that making, give me a one if this is making sense. Okay, so Olivia, scroll down and then just look at the chapter titles. So it, do they say types of, pol and, unless you're in Kentucky, then it's probably weird as hell. There's a few states that don't do Pearson and Prometric. They do their own breakdown like California. So you guys would be the one-off random situations, but most people either have Prometric or they have Pearson. So look at your state and, and see what type of chapter titles it has. And then as I'm explaining what is in that chapter, write it down because it's going to be true for your state. The only difference will be the numbers might be slightly off. So we're like if we're looking, we're looking at Missouri right now, types of under casualty types of policies is 25 in Missouri. But it is, oh, we were doing Texas, whereas I, I exited my Texas. In Texas, instead of 25, it is um uh, 13 or well 25 for property casualty right so the numbers might be a little bit off but the 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 explanation of the chapter is the same no matter what state you're in if that's the title of your chapter if you're in prometric you're it's going to look different it's going to have the um they're going to break down the chapters a lot further section by section by section where pearson will just group it all together Prometric stretches it out. So if you notice in um, here in Arizona, for instance, it's way more spread out. Five questions, nine questions, 15, 15, 19, 15. And if we go back to one of these examples, it's a lot bigger, 25, 14, 11, right? So it's gonna look a little bit different, but everything that I say that is true for Pearson, if yours says Pearson, it's true for you. And if I'm talking about Prometric and yours says Prometric, it's true for you, okay? The only, there's are a few weird people like Kentucky, um, California, and a few others, they do their own testing. They don't hire Pearson or Prometric to do it. Okay, um, okay, it's checking the comments. I'm seeing a lot of ones, perfect. You guys are understanding, amazing. North Dakota says PSI. Okay, so PSI will either mimic Pearson or Prometric. So Ashley, simply look at the chapter titles. If your chapter titles look like this, you're following what I say about Prometric. If your chapter titles look like this, you're following what I say about Pearson. So PSI isn't its own thing. They mimic whatever was last used. It's kind of weird. Michigan is also PSI. Yeah, we'll look at, well, okay, we'll look at a Michigan one for PSI, but um, the yeah, Alabama might be another weird one too. I don't, I think Alabama is tricky because it requires a lot of, um, it requires a lot of uh, commercial. Yeah, so, so some states have their own thing. So see, yeah, um, we'll look, yeah, Alabama, Alabama, so it looks so different. Uh, but property and casualty vocabulary is, Property casualty basics is general terms insurance. I really need to make a reference chart to like 
type out like the chapters <laughs> and to see what's in each one. Okay, so I'm gonna do Pearson and Prometric and then just let me know. Um, Wisconsin is tricky because Wisconsin is massively state laws. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> so let's do Pearson and Prometric, then we'll take a look at some PSI examples. Okay, so most of you are gonna be Pearson because Pearson is like 25, 30% of most state exams. So most of you are Pearson. So everything I'm about to say, even though we're looking at Texas is gonna be true for you. So your biggest chapters are gonna be types of, or, or actually, let's see, how do they do this? Um, okay, I, uh, I wanna, I need to draw. I need to, I need to highlight. Yeah, and I get, I, I, again, this is, I'm kind of flying off the cuff here because there were so many of you that playing games is not an option because there's not enough spaces. So I'm just kind of making this up as I go to help you guys out know what we need to test. So do you see how, um, mm, yep, okay, give me one minute. I gotta, I gotta get my pen. I gotta get my handy dandy pen out. I can't write on that screen. Thank you for your patience. And by the way, if you have a question specific to um, specific to something or you, you're struggling or whatever, you could put it in the chat box and we'll make sure that we get your, your questions answered. So why don't we just talk about this for a second without having to look at any specific thing. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're just gonna talk about this. When you log into, whoa, what was going on? Oh, my computer, whoa, my computer did something weird. You cannot minimize Zoom when you are recording. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, my, my screen keeps um, doing really weird things. All right, so let me get logged in here to mine. When you are studying and you're going through chapter by chapter in your course, there's nothing that tells you if one chapter is more important than another chapter. Nothing says that, like nothing says this chapter should be the chapter that you really study. And so it's hard to know which one should you really pay attention to, which one you shouldn't. This is why I'm going over the exam breakdown so that you can know which ones you wanna study and which ones you don't need to study. Like which ones are more important, which ones are not as important. That's why it was happening, that was weird, okay. So um, I'm gonna join the meeting on my other screen so I can share my screen. No, nope. cancel, stay participant, got it. Don't join computer audio. And what am I doing next? Okay, prepare to pass, continue. All right, almost there guys. Thank you for your patience, Texas. Property casualty. I right, almost there. You, you got it. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. And then zoom and then share screen. Screen. Okay. All right. You guys see my new screen? Yeah. It might yes. take a second. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> I, um, my experience and knowledge in this is coming from the fact that I have spent the last four years working at exam FX, which is, uh, on uh, same Kaplan, 80 banker, Excel, pass master, whatever. It's just one of those like Burger King and McDonald's. So I spent the last four years working for, um, exam FX and I originally started as a um, contracted worker. They said that we could give you like one to two classes a month, if that, if you're lucky, but we do need a, a teacher. So they had hired me because I had been a middle school teacher and I sold insurance. And so I got the job and I was given one to two classes a month, if that. Then they sent me out to an insurance company who requested a live instructor. I went out there and I taught everyone passed. I think it was a hundred percent pass rate. That locked in a big contract where the, the, the insurance company that I went out to teach to was like, whoa, this class was so good. We got every person to pass. We want Melissa to come out again and again. 
So then ExamFX started sending me out to all the different insurance companies so that I could teach the classes and lock in the contracts so that they would exclusively buy ExamFX. I locked in United Healthcare, which is the largest insurer in the world, $40 billion. Um, but I was the most requested instructor and I was flown out to different insurance companies all across the country to teach these classes. My pass rates, depending on the state, and where we're from is, a, is usually hung, hung around in the 70s to 80s, but there were many times that I could get up to 100% depending on the test and the, the state, because every state and test is different. So the reason I'm saying all of this is to, to tell you why I know and understand everything that I'm about to say and how I've accumulated this knowledge over the last four years, flying all across the country, teaching in different states. Now, um, the reason I am using Excel though, um, so in January, I uh, quit ExamFX because I wanted to do this on my own. I wanted to be able to do my creativity. Um, I felt that my ability to teach was restricted to what they felt should be done. And I was like, no, I could teach this better. I could do this better. I can create materials better. And so that's what I wanted to do. Now it's not necessarily exam FX's fault or anyone's fault because they have to follow the state exam approval system. They have to be very structured in the way that they do things and saying the wrong thing could actually trigger like an avalanche of audits. So I had to, I had to restrict what I said and how I taught it so that exam FX would not like lose their, you know, uh, status of being state approved. I didn't wanna be confined by state approvals anymore. I just wanted to be able to share my knowledge with people to pass this exam the first time, every time. That's my goal, first time, every time. And anyone who has worked with me in my royal treatment has passed first time, every time. Just wanted to put that out there. I am available to work with one-on-one. -on -one. I was doing one-off tutoring sessions, but I didn't like that because I only got one hour with people. And it was better if I could work with you the whole time you're studying and take you through the whole process. And um, my last client, he's actually working on his life and health right now. We just finished his property and casualty. He only, he, well, actually my, my, my uh, yeah, he, he just took his life and health practice test and he didn't even read any of the material. So he didn't do any quizzes. He didn't do any reading. All he did was watch my videos. So he watched all of my videos for life and health. Then he took the practice test and he scored a 63, which is almost passing without reading anything else. No state specifics, nothing. Like without knowing anything else other than watching my videos and he almost got a pass. So now our next thing, and that's just his practice exam. Now we're gonna actually go through, make sure he learns all the state specific knowledge so that he can, you know, pass. Um, and then my, my other client, she only took the practice test one time took her certificate, because in Wisconsin, you have to, um, you have to do three tests. Wisconsin is mean, <laughs> three tests, a practice test, a certificate test, and the state exam test. She took this one time, passed it after a year of not being able to pass. So she was working a whole year trying to study, trying to learn, trying to pass, and she couldn't do it. And then she hired me um, and I led her through the process. She took one practice test, passed it, one certificate, passed it, one state exam passed it. She got a 70%, exactly 70% on her state exam, which is what she needed. And I had focused on telling her that you don't need to know everything. You only need to know what they're going to actually test you on, which is what I focus my teaching on. So I focus my teaching on as to what you're actually going to see, what they're actually going to test you on. A state approved course has to show you everything. They have to show you every possible thing that that is related to the policy that is put on the exam. I like to focus on what you're actually gonna to need to know. So that's what separates me from these state approved courses is that I will highlight and focus what it is you actually need to know as opposed to an online course, which just makes you have to study and learn everything. So with that in mind, I, I, really, I really set on like, how do I get these people to quickly and efficiently pass the first time without the overwhelm or without the anxiety of struggling to pass.com. 
Yes, prepare to pass.com is what I'm looking at right now. Okay, so Excel. Awesome. Um, so I was with ExamFX when I was working for them. I quit, started my own company, Insurance Exam Queen. And since then, Excel has actually reached out to me, said they want to partner with me. And pretty soon, I will be selling a package where you can get your Excel course and all of my videos for cheaper than if you were to buy Excel alone. So that's really freaking cool. And I'm super excited to roll that out. I'm still waiting for the contract. So technically nothing is set in stone yet, but that is what we're working on. And I am super excited for that. So I am now using Excel's materials um, and Excel's uh, prepare to pass website since I will now be um, you know, partnering with them. Okay, so let's talk about this. We're talking about Pearson right now. We're talking about Pearson. It may also be PSI, but the main thing is looking. Does your does your chapter say types of does your test say types of policies? If it says types of policies, everything I'm about to say applies to you. If you are in a prometric state where it's like broken down, you can just close your ears for a minute. Okay. When we look at this, it's not fair to just say. Well, if we're doing the property and casualty exam, 25 questions are here, 14, 11, 25, 14, 11, 18, 12. When you look at this, like for instance, types of um, this chapter, types of policies, this is what is inside of that chapter. And this, oh, this is casualty. So I'm talking about casualty. You have casualty, you have property, okay? So this is types of casualty, types of Casualty, what does that mean? That means auto, that means commercial auto. That means um, CGL and then there's a, and then crime and um, usually bonds. Sometimes they separate bonds into a different chapter but I don't see that here. So this chapter types of casualty makes up auto, commercial auto, CGL, crime, bonds, and a few other things. This chapter is probably 100 pages worth of study for 25 questions. You have to study 100 pages for only 25 questions. That means you need four pages worth of material to be prepared for one question. Is that a very valuable chapter to study? No, it is not. That is tricky because here's the thing. Look at insurance terms and related concepts, which by the way, you have one for casualty and you have one for property. But when you study, they tend to put them together. This chapter makes up 14 questions, but it's only like 10 pages worth of study. 10 pages for 14, um, CGL, commercial general liability. Oh, it, this is a C, CGL. That's occurrence versus claims made, stuff like that. <clears throat> so when I look at this and it says 25 questions will come from types of, types of casualty, that requires over a hundred pages worth of study. Oh my God, for those 25 questions, that's a lot where you could instead really focus on insurance terms and concepts, which is only 10 pages, and you can easily lock in those 14 points way easier than you can lock in those 25 points. Is this making sense? Give me a one. Perfect. And I'm gonna scroll back here through the chapter to the questions you asked me. <laughs> I love it, Jennifer, lost as hell. I live in Ohio, but I have to take Texas. So you pay attention to Texas, Richard. But be like, um, you usually take the exam of the state you are resident in, and then you would get a non-resident for Texas. So I would double check that because generally you take the state exam of the state that you are a resident in. So double check with like your uh, mentor or something. You're okay, Zuzu. Baby boy, you're all right. We're safe. Okay, um, let's see, Wisconsin, I'm scheduled for tomorrow. I think I need to hire you and reschedule my test. <laughs> um, what are, uh, maybe, 
potentially can i get a zoom link i need to switch to computer um it's in the the chat box and on the facebook group are the practice tests similar to the state exam oh that's a good question so katie just said are the practice tests similar to the state exam maybe it's hit or miss so here's the thing about that remember how i talked about all this state approval and why i didn't want to work at exam fx because i was strict restricted based on state approved language one of the rules about the state exam and the practice exams is that you the state approved courses are not allowed to have the same test questions so if this the state exam makes up these questions exam fx excel and kaplan are not allowed to use those same exact questions and if the state finds out that they are using those same exact questions they can pull their approval. So there's a few companies who are losing approvals left and right all the time, like license to co co some one of those, I don't know. They're always losing approvals because they they sometimes have too many questions that are similar and then they get shut down. So, and then by luck, some of the questions may be the same, some of them might not be the same. The thing is, is that because it may or may not be the same, because, because there is a chance that most of the questions won't be the same. Studying the questions is not beneficial. It's not beneficial to take quiz after quiz after quiz after quiz. I promise, I promise, I have been a professional doing this for the last four years. You will find people online, like if you go into an insurance group, people's, oh, just do the practice quiz. It's the same questions. Maybe back in the 80s when they took their test, but nowadays they're not the same. It is not beneficial to study questions. It is not beneficial to take test after test after test. And when you work with me and I tell you exactly what to do, you're only taking one practice test. That's it. And you pass it the first time, like boom. Like why would you spend hours testing and testing and testing and testing? It just demoralizes you if you get the wrong score. And then, if you if you begin and this was something that was really big you know at exam of x where i worked before was people would email i i handled the instructor support email so i was receiving emails all day long from people who were studying with the material taking the test and not able to pass and they would email and ask for help they would say i don't understand i am scoring 80 90 percent when i take my test my my practice exam but when I take the state exam, I keep failing. What am I doing wrong? And then I would log in and I would see that they spent 40, 50 hours on quizzes, on, on practice exams, and maybe 20 hours worth of reading, if we were lucky. And then I would notice that they would be reading the text while taking the quiz, which meant that they didn't know the material. They were looking up the answers. The state exam is not open book. You cannot do that on the state exam. So do not do that now. There is no point in taking a quiz and looking up answers. Ineffective, awful, not a good idea. It's not gonna help you because on the state exam, when you actually go to take the state exam, you have to know what's in your head. That's all that you have available to you is what is in your head, not a book that you can't look up. It's a closed book test. So my thing, and I even had one girl, oh my gosh, 140 hours of quizzing. That's like a month of work, 40 hours a week. She, she For one month of time, all she did was take quizzes. Yeah. Like, Holy, oh my gosh, <laughs> what a waste of time. She was failing, failing. She would, she would get 100% with us. And then fail the state exam. Then she would take a test again, us get a hundred percent, and then Nothing fail again. They don't even. Um, check your mute, guys. And then, so it was just really like crazy. I told her, I said, read the book. I said, just read the book. She went and read the book. She passed it the very next time because she had so much practice questions. <laughs> she had so many practice questions. All she had to do was read it one time at that point, and she was able to pass the exam. So to your point where Katie says, are the practice tests and the state exam similar? Maybe, maybe not. So it's not an effective tool. 
is not an effective tool. It's much easier to learn the information in the way that I explain it than it is to quiz and quiz and quiz and quiz and quiz and quiz and still fail. It's not worth your time. So that was that question. Okay. Check mute because someone's making noises driving me crazy. Um, I don't know who it is. Let me see. I can't wait. Oh, and, uh, here we go. I found it. No, I don't have control for that. Wrong computer. Dang it. <laughs> How do I? Uh, sorry, y'all. It, it makes my brain go really squirrely when someone is not muted and I hear background noises. Boom. Got it. Okay. All right. So looking at the question. Okay. So I asked, answered Katie's question. Uh, okay. Holly, 80, 80 Banker Final Coverage tests so much on state laws and the actual test doesn't even mention state laws. Should I study those? Holly, I need to know what state you're in. Um, I would like to, oh yes. You can hire me one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. All they highlighted would be general lines and prop. All you highlighted would be for the general lines property and casualty test. Yeah, we're still going to do that breakdown. Okay, scheduled for New Jersey property. You got this. Oh my God, I studied 80 Maker and felt completely lost because the questions were totally different. Right. The questions that you study in your course may not be the same on the state and they can reword them differently. I, I preach that you should not marry the language of the quizzes that you got to get comfortable stretching beyond the meaning. Like for instance, um, a, a specified, um, stated a, yeah, sp a specific policy, you have, you have blanket coverage or you have specific coverage. And instead of using the word specific, they will use the word certain. Like they use different words to say the same thing. And so you, if you only study the question, you're studying that exact wording on the practice test. And that wording won't necessarily be the same on the state test if you only get very comfortable with the way they worded it. You need to be able to stretch yourself beyond how they word it. Okay, um, Raven, my exam of expert state shows the Pearson breakdown, but the prepared to pass shows the prometric breakdown. That's, um, they may be in the middle of a transition. So that's possible as well. Let me know your state and I'll look that up. Oh, well, I, I don't know, honestly, you'd have to, Google your state and see if there's any laws. Cause a lot of times if they use, cause the states will flip back and forth. One day we want to, we want PSI, we want PSI to do our test. No, we want Prometric to do our test and they'll flip flop back and forth. And so there's always this transition period where they're heading towards using Prometric but they're still on Pearson. So that could be one of the reasons. Um, Gloria, the questions were hard. Were the questions harder or easier? I feel like 80 Banker is tricky with the way they question. I have not heard many good things about 80 Banker. I'm just going to say that. Um, <laughs> um, so many of you are like, 80 Banker, ugh. Uh, so the stuff on the exam asked isn't in the material given. That's another thing that can be tricky about the state approved courses is they will make a very generalized course, not tailored to the state. And then, um, and not focus in on the exam breakdown, which is why I focus in on the exam breakdown. Um, do you have payments for the royal treatment or all up front? We could talk about that. Um, you must make, oh, Michigan, you must make a 80 for the, no, Michigan should be 74, 75. Um, Sylvia, I would recommend Excel now that I'm using them. So, <laughs> uh, this Friday, I'm not ready, so I should be rescheduled. Um, Sylvia, uh, Sylvia Lewis, message me. I'm not, uh, email me. Indiana, Raven is in Indiana. Let me see. You, oh, the prepare to pass. You would need to, yeah, no, I can't, I'm not going to look into that right now, but you would need to Google to see if they're transitioning. Do you know how many questions need to be answered right on the Florida exam? Yeah, 70% of them. <laughs> Your Florida exam will look just like Texas. So Florida and Texas look the same because they're both um, Pearson. But if it, I think if they're out of 100 questions, so then you would need 70% correct. So Florida, like you'll see here, Florida and Texas look the same. So, oh, property casualty. See how you have types of policies, insurance terms? It looks the same. You are doing it for property and casualty. 
you are doing 170 questions, you need to get um, to, oh, you're doing it. Okay, this is another thing too we got to talk about. Do you see how, let me talk about that real quick. I need to go back to what I was doing. I answered your questions. I'm just getting so excited to answer your guys' questions. Nevada is 80%, yes. Okay, so do you see how it says um, total questions scored on the exam? Oh, Texas doesn't have it, but um, Florida does. So this right here, when it says total questions 175, and then it says scored 160, that means that there's 15 practice questions that are not gonna count against you. You have to answer all 175 and you have to treat all 175 as a state exam question, but 15 of them will not count for or against you. Um, and so you only need 70% of 160. You don't need to know it all. So that if you notice that, if yours does that, see how it says total questions 175, total scored 160. If you see something like that, that just means they have practice tests on there or practice questions, but you won't know which ones are practice and which ones are not. So you're gonna treat every single one the same. You don't know, Gloria, you won't know. So you gotta treat every single one the same. Like this is a state exam question. This is a state exam question. However, what this telling what this is telling you though is out of 160 questions. So this is Florida, for example, but this works for any state that has this um, that has this on it, and you can do your own math for it too. So let me calculator calculator. Okay, so you're doing 175 questions, but only 160 are scored. So of 160, and this is how you find out what is the 70%, you take the number of questions you're gonna be scored on and then you multiply it times 0.7, times 0.7. And you can add a zero in there for 70% if that helps you feel better. But you're, you're basically finding, how, if I'm taking 160 questions, how many is 70%? And that's how you do it. You take the number of questions you're being tested on times, 0 0.70 or whatever your pass rate is. If your pass rate is 74, you would do 0.74. If your pass rate is 80%, you would do 0 0.80, right? So you take that percentage. So in, we're doing Florida. So in Florida, you are gonna be asked 175 questions. You only need to get 112 right which means that there are 60 times where you can say, I failed that question, I didn't get it wrong. I failed that one, I didn't get it wrong. Don't allow that to demoralize you. You are allowed to get a lot of them wrong. You can get so many of them wrong, right? Out of 175, you only need 112 correct. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know the most of the things that they will test you on, which is what I focus on in my teachings. Okay, all right, uh, but let's go back to what we were talking about. Okay, so over here, oh, that was, oh, look at that, that was my dwelling lesson that I did for YouTube. Okay, by the way, check that out. Dwelling is, um, is kind of a small section on most exams. So I decided to make the dwelling lesson free and that's why it's on YouTube. And I don't put dwelling in any of my, my purchase courses because you can just access the free one. So if you have it, and it's an hour long, it's an hour long lesson on YouTube and you can watch that dwelling lesson. If dwelling is a big section for you, watch that entire video. It also is very good for just understanding homeowners and property insurance in general. It's gonna help you with all kinds of things. I even talked about earthquake and flood. I talked about all kinds of stuff in that class. All right, but anyway, that's not what I meant to click on. I meant to click on this. Okay, so going back to this, when you are reading cat types of casualty policies, it represents a hundred pages worth of study for only 25 questions. That's not very effective. Like, why would you study a hundred pages for only 25 questions? I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage you to do that. What I would encourage you to do is focus on auto, commercial auto, and then ignore the rest. <laughs> 100%, that's what I would recommend. 
Um, I would read it and take the quiz on it. And if you're taking Excel, you have to take the quiz, which is great because it will, it will lock in some knowledge when you're taking the test and you're taking the quizzes. But you don't need all 25 points here. You don't need them. You're going to super focus in on insurance terms and related concepts, which is only 10 pages worth of study. So like you're going to get, when I look at this, I'm like, you really, you really want to get those. You really want to get those. You're going to be able to get those and those and insurance. And then you only need, you only need half of those points there, which would be the commercial auto and the regular auto. You don't need all 25. You only need about half, which is about 12. Same for types of property. So what's in the types of property chapter? Types of property. And again, this works for anyone who has a Pearson state. Types of property is home dwelling, um, CPP, and BOP. Only focus on home and dwelling, half the points. Commercial is too tricky to study. It's just, it's a lot of material, a lot of numbers, a lot of things. So I don't focus on commercial very much. I focus on the ones that are the easiest to learn. So again, you're not, you're not gonna get 25 points here. You're only gonna get 12. And you're gonna get 12 here. You're gonna study just the things that are the most easiest to learn, which would be homeowners and dwelling and not CPP and not BOP. I do have a couple of YouTube videos talking about CPP and BOP and I would watch those. I'm not, I'm not saying the information isn't valuable. I'm saying that it's really freaking hard to study it all because it's a lot, which is why I generally avoid it. However, I'm gonna face my fears and I will make a commercial class. <laughs> I will do commercial because there are a few of you like Alabama where your 26% of your exam is commercial. I am so sorry. Is so it New York I, one? New York is not as bad, no. Um, okay. I passed the New York exam myself with a 90. So I know that they do not have a lot of commercial. So let's look at New York real quick. It, it's a high percent, but it's not that bad. So it's... um. Commercial 16 questions. You can get all 16 questions wrong and still pass. So it's not that it's not that important on New York. Um, okay, <clears throat> so back over here, types of types of property is home, dwelling, CPP, BOP, super focus on home and dwelling, very minimal focus on CPP and BOP. And you're you're hyper focusing on insurance terms and related concepts and policy provisions and contract law. Which is why I um, have a class. I literally taught both of those concepts in one class and I sell it for $22. So let me post that in the link. Um, insurance exam. So if you are in a Pearson state and you want to be able to easily score as many points as you can in the very easy chapters, that's going to be insurance terms and related concepts and policy provisions and contract law. Because you're only talking about between those two chapters, you're talking about 20 pages worth of study for 14 plus 11 plus 14 plus 11. What is that? 10, 20, 30, 40, 8, 50 questions versus on 10 pages worth of study. That is so easy. So I'm dropping the link to that class right now in the comments. So the uh, if I can find it. <laughs> Chat, oh, there it is. So this is the class. If you are in Pearson State, that's, oh, I only sent it to S Sylvia. That is the class to get. So I do sell all of my property and casualty in one big bundle for $111. But if you can't afford that and there's just you just need one thing, that's the one thing. It's $22 in it. I just put the link in the comment. It's going to cover the insurance terms and related concepts and policy provision for both of those. And it's super easy to lock in all of those points. It is way harder to lock in those points. It's very hard to lock those in. So you focus on the ones that are easy to get and you minimally focus on the ones that are hard to get. So the class that I just dropped in the link will cover um, those, those four concepts, the insurance terms related concepts, policy provision, contract law. 
Now for state law, and this is gonna be common to all lines, common to all lines for insurance regulation. And actually everything I'm about to say right now works for everybody, whether you're doing, um, whether you are Pearson or Prometric, what do you need to actually know? What do you need to actually know from the insurance or common lines chapter? So let me go over that with everybody so that you know what it is you need to focus in and study on. Look at all my, my whiteboards from teaching classes, it's so fun. Okay, so right now I'm talking about common to all lines or it's called insurance regulation. And they will usually put the, uh, I didn't spell regulation right, whatever. They will usually put the state title in it. So Wisconsin, common to all lines. Texas, common to all lines. One thing to note is if you're going to do property, casualty, life, and health, common to all lines, that information will be on all the exams. So if you plan to take all four, knowing common to all lines or insurance regulation, that will that exact content will be on all the tests, life and health and property casualty. So it's like a double dip chapter if you're doing all four licenses. So anyway, what do you need to know from these things? One, you wanna know about the director or the commissioner. Director or the commissioner. That is the guy who is in charge of insurance in your state. So it's the guy who's in charge of insurance in your state. You wanna know what he's doing. His main job is to protect the public, protect the public. So everything he does is to protect the public from bad insurance companies, from bad insurance agents. The biggest thing that he does for that is examinations, examinations. And this is where he goes into the insurance company and examines all their records and all their files. You want to know how many years does he do that? He does it every so often. Most states, it's five, but some states are three. You need to check what your state says. So know the job of the commissioner is to protect the public. Know how often he does examinations. And the reasons that he does examinations is to make sure that companies are solvent. That might be an E. I don't spell very well. Solvent means that you have money. You have money. Since insurance companies are gonna be paying out all these claims, we need to make sure that they have enough money to get all these claims, to pay all these claims. And so solvent means that they have money to do that. And he's doing the examinations to make sure that they are solvent. If they are insolvent, that means that they don't have money. They don't have money. And he's doing the, those examinations to confirm if they do or don't have money. Okay, then you wanna know the rules about licensing. So some of you have pre-licensing where you have to like study for a certain number of hours before you're allowed to take the state exam. How many hours do you need for that? You need to know that. Then you wanna know about the license itself. How many years is it good for? Is your license good for two years, three years? Every state is a little bit different. Then you wanna know how do you keep your license? That's called continuing education. How many hours do you need for that? Do you need 24 hours, 36 hours? How many hours do you need? Then they might let you carry over. What that means is, let's say for instance, that my license is good for two years, and that means 24 months. And then I need 24 hours of continuing education. Boom, memory trick. If your license is good for 24 months and you need 24 hours of continuing education, boom, memory trick, you just locked it in. Now, let's say if you only need 24 hours, but you took a class that's 30 hours, which means you had six extra hours. Some states will allow you to carry that over, some won't. Just know what it is for you. The last thing with licenses is paying attention to, um, ooh, what is it? Oh, your birth month. Generally, generally your license will not renew 
based on when you got it. It will be based on your birth month. So pay attention to like, when do you have to do the CE? Usually it's in your, it's every two years or every three years on your birth month. So pay attention to that. Then you also want to know the rules for licensing. You have to be 18, pay the fee, pass the test. Be 18, pay the fee, pass the test. You don't need a college degree. You don't need um, a high school diploma. You just need to pay the fee, pass the test, be 18. So you want to remember that. Then you want to focus in on the unfair trade practices. Unfair trade practice. Unfair trade practice. That's going to be the, um, this is going to be the misrepresentation, lying to the customer, twisting a false comparison of two policies, rebating, bribing the customer to buy a policy, coercion. Um, I know I'm talking fast. This will be recorded. Coercion for, um, that's instead of where rebating is like bribing the customer, coercion is like holding a gun to their head. And then unfair discrimination unfair discrimination. Um, insurance companies discriminate all day long, young, old, uh, male, female, good driver, bad driver. But what there's a few things they're not allowed to discriminate on race, religion, um, race, religion, uh, gender identity, sexual orientation, uh, blindness, and then also marital status. Marital status is a weird one because insurance companies do judge you on being married or not in that it could change your rate. Married people generally are safer, so they get a lower rate for insurance. Um, and, but what they can't do is say, oh, you're divorced, so you can't get insurance with us. They're not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to decline you because you are or are not married, but they can change your premium if you are or are not married. Um, churning is another one, Tiffany. That's usually most common for life or health. And that's where you try and get the customer to keep buying new policies from you just so you could make commission um, that's churning, but it's not as common. So then after that, these, these are the main things to focus on. But if you have, if, if your percent of law is like bigger than like 15%, if it's bigger than that, you're going to need to study a little bit more like this. This isn't enough. This is the bulk, but it's not enough. So what you want to do when you're reading the section, so let's say you're reading a section called hearings and they say, blah, 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 10 days, blah, 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 20 days, blah, 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 10 days, blah, 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 30 days, blah, 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 10 days. What do you notice? 10, 10, 10. The most common number for hearings is 10 days. So commit that to memory. And you're more likely to be right than not. So you can do this for every, every chapter, even like commercial or, um, oh my God, Dana, what state are you in? <laughs> I've never seen state law. At third. Oh, Oregon. Is it Oregon or what's the other one? Wisconsin and Oregon have a high percent. Um, anyway, you can do this method for like any chapter. So when you, when you see a section and it's like number, 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 what is the most common number? Pick that number, commit it to memory for that section. And then when you take the test, choose that number every time. Like on like commercial, on like the, the property insurance for commercial, it's like a hundred feet is like one of the most common answers. The, the, the stuff has to be within a hundred feet. The sign has to be within 100 feet. I just choose 100 feet on the exam every time because it's one of the most common numbers. Okay. All right, so that's for state law. Okay, I want to do Prometric real quick. I know we're kind of out of time here. Um, Prometric, where's, oh, let me come over here. No, over here. What am I doing? I've got too many screens. All right, now we're going to look at a Prometric example which, okay, I got New York pulled up here. Although I think I have, I don't know if I've ever had a lot of New York or Arizona. Doesn't matter. I'm going to do New York because I have it. Okay, so let's say you're in a Prometric state and this is what your breakdown looks like. So this is for Prometric or PSI. PSI tends to look like this one a lot as well. 
The main thing is not, is it prometric or PSI, but what do the chapters look like? If the chapters look like this, everything that I'm saying to you right now is true and valid for you. Focus in on how many questions will come from each chapter. So this is the one where you're gonna say, okay, 20 is really big, 21 is really big, 8, 16 is big, 16 is big, 14 is big, 14 is big, and then you kind of got the 12s down here. Now, what I will tell you though, I'm gonna label these according to what is easy to study. It is easy to study, just to green, it is easy to study general. It is easy to study PNC. It is easier to study auto and other. Then it gets a little bit harder. Um, homeowners is a little bit harder, but it's not as hard as property. It's just, a, it's, it's like homeowners is like 30 pages of study, whereas C, CPP is like 100. But it's not necessarily super easy to learn all the information, which is why I got to take my home and auto class. Um, then you have, what else? Um, dwelling is a little bit easier because of homeowners. They actually go together like a lot. They go together like a lot. Um, and then you have, um, and then these ones are really hard to study. So these next ones are really hard. Commercial is pretty hard. Oh, that's supposed to be red. You guys done? Yay. Oh. Someone's unmuted. We hear you saying, yay, if you want to check Bye. your mute. Uh, BOP is hard. Com uh, workers' comp is kind of hard. Um, oh yeah. Oh BOP. Yeah, this, those ones are hard. And then insurance regulation is—it's uh, kind of hard. It's, it's like a mix between yellow and red. Because if you learn what I just told you, director, licensing. You're cutting out. It's a little bit. I know. I'll be leaving too. Who's talking? Shh. I was like, ah, it's hard to hear. <laughs> Yes, I got it. Thank you. I got it. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So those, so these color codes are based on what's easy and hard. So green is easy. Green is easier. Yellow is medium. And red is hard. So knowing this, right, you, you want to study the green as much as possible. Like you want to be scoring 100% in the green chapters when you're taking those quizzes. You want to score barely 70% in the yellow chapters. And it's like you don't even care if you pass the red chapters. Um, you will have to for a lot of states. You have to pass the quizzes. But like if you're like barely passing and struggling to pass and it's a red chapter, don't worry about it. Oh, I kind of did the colors backwards of how I do it normally. Normally, I, the red is super steady, yellow is medium steady, green is is past study. But this is easy, medium, hard is how I did this one. I need, to, I definitely need to set a structure for how I explain it. But you guys understand what I'm saying now. Green is easy, yellow is medium, red is hard, and this is true no matter if you're in New York or Arizona or wherever. But just pay attention if if you have like. 40 questions in BOP, you're going to have to study it because it makes up 40 questions and that's a really big chunk. So you have to balance it between how many questions will I be asked versus how much material do I have to study to get that? So you, there's a balance between that. Um, and, and if you follow these color codings for easy, hard, whatever, it can make it a little bit easier to study that, that material. Okay. All right, I did a prometric example. I did a Pearson example. I know there's random one-off states. Um, I will do, um, I want to start, this was fun. I like this. I want to start doing this more often. So we're going to, we can meet again, but let's play a quick game since we're all here. However, only 10 of you will actually be able to play. So I'm sorry. <laughs> but I will work on, um, I will work on getting an account so that um, more of us can play, but I, I'm not going to do it right now. So let me play a game, and the first 10 of you to log in will be the ones to play. Everyone else, just follow along. Just follow along and score yourself. Check yourself. All right, almost there. One second. All right, and then I'm going to browse the comments as well to see if there's um, any other lingering questions in there.
question. Uh, let's do let's do auto. Auto is fun. Auto will work for personal or property. Casualty or property, personal lines, property, casualty, casualty lines, whatever. All right, I'm about to share my screen. You want to go to kahoot.it and then you type in the game pin. And as soon as we've got 10 people, that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is it? Kahoot.it. The instructions are on the screen now. So you go to kahoot.it. You, um, you enter in this game pin and then you pick a name. And again, I'm sorry, I can only fit 10 of you. I will buy it later. All right, three more. One more, it's almost locked in. Yeah, we'll do another, somebody asked if we can have another game night. We will do another game night. Um, once I buy the, the account. Okay, so you'll quickly see how you answer the questions. I'll ask the question on the screen. You answer it on your phone. You'll, you'll pick it up really fast. What is part D on a PAP, a personal auto policy? Uh, part D is, oh, where's my, oh, there it goes. Okay. D is damage to your auto. Part D, damage to your auto. Part D, damage to your auto. Part D, damage to your auto. When you have liability only and you get an additional car, what happens? Uh, you have full coverage for four days. So I'll briefly explain this. When you have an auto policy and you only have liability, which there's no part D, there's no damage to your auto, and you go to a dealership and you buy a brand new car, your car insurance has no coverage for you based on the coverage you currently have. And they need it to be able to protect people who bought a brand new car like over a holiday weekend. Like imagine you back in the day before we had apps, and, and phones where you could just fix your insurance, you actually had to go to an insurance agent's office and talk to your insurance agent and have him add your vehicle to the policy. So they made a rule that said, and most modern insurance companies now do 30 days automatically. Well, not for full coverage, but um, they needed to have a way to protect people's brand new cars. If they, like if you had a junker car, and you go buy a car, um, a brand new car on Memorial weekend. So you only have liability only. You have a very junky car. On Memorial day, you go buy a, a, a car on Friday night. Your ins insurance agent's office won't be open until Tuesday because it's a holiday weekend. You need to know that you're covered that full time so that if you crash your brand new car, it's covered. So no matter what auto insurance you have, liability only, like barely any coverage on your car, if you get a brand new car or acquire a new car, it doesn't have to be brand new, by the way. If you just simply acquire a new car, new to you car, you will automatically get part D for four days with a $500 deductible. So when you have liability only, only part A, and you get another car, that other car will automatically have full coverage for four days. And then you have, that's enough time to go to your insurance agent's office and get that car added with a $500 deductible. All right. What is part C on a PAP? Ooh, part C is uninsured, underinsured, uninsured, underinsured. Part C, uninsured, underinsured. Part C, uninsured, underinsured. That's the UM, the uninsured motorist, and the 
underinsured motorist. Your auto bodily is 5,100. You injured three people at 40K each. How much will the policy pay out in total? Oh, 17 of you got in here. Awesome. That's cool. <laughs> I thought it was like a limited. Maybe I have up to 20. I don't know. That's cool. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So we struggled with this one a little bit. Okay. Your bodily injury is 5,100. That 50 number is all you can pay for each individual person. And then the second number is all that you can pay for everyone in total. So if you injure 40, 40, 40, that's 80, 120, that's, you can't pay that much. You don't have that much. You can only pay up to a hundred. Um, and if you chose 50, you were probably thinking each person gets up to 50, but it asks you how much does it pay out in total? So it'd be 40 plus 40 plus 40, but no more than a hundred thousand because that's the ultimate limit. So I teach this in my auto class that's on sale for $11 because they actually test you on this a lot and you need to, well, not, not necessarily a lot, but it's confusing. If you don't fully understand per person and, to, and total bodily injury, you can mess up a lot of questions. So I spend a good amount of time and I do actually teach it in my YouTube videos too. So if, the, if you struggle on this, make sure you look at part A, any, any YouTube video I have on part A or make sure you buy the home and auto class. What are limits of liability? Yes, yeah, so ooh, this one's tricky. You guys are all over the place with this one. Okay, so limits of liability are just, everything has a limit. Your policy has a limit. Each accident has a limit. Each claim has a limit. Each coverage has a limit. There are limit. everything has a limit of liability. So it's simply, what is the amount that the insurer is responsible to pay for that thing? So the limit of liability for the whole policy would be the aggregate. The limit of liability for each accident would be per occurrence. The limit of liability for each um, a current uh, claim would be like an occurrence. So there's there's multiple limited liabilities. So it's simply how much do they have to pay for that one thing that we're talking about? That's a limited liability. What is part E on a PAP, personal auto policy PAP? Ooh, you guys got this one. Duties after loss. Party, duty, party, duty, party, duty, party, duty. On a PAP, which of the following is not covered under other than collision? So this is also known as comprehensive. So what is not covered? <laughs> okay um fact of a portable cell phone okay this is a tricky one um homeowners never covers flood but auto actually does because if there's a flood coming what do cars do they drag away. so cars are actually covered for flood only homeowners and property is excluded for flood 
Um, theft of a portable cell phone is not covered. Your car insurance only covers the car, not anything inside. So if you have a backpack, you have a laptop and it is stolen out of your car, you need homeowners or renters for that. Your auto will not cover it. Very rarely do they cover something like um, your cell phone. I'm sorry, uh, car seats. Th they may cover that, but it's, it's, un it, it's not always true. So they don't like to cover anything that is not part of the car. So uh, flood is covered, but theft of items in the car, like a backpack, uh, a, you know, you got your laptop in there, you got your cell phone in your car, you have your suitcase in your car. If anything is stolen out of your car, your auto does not cover that. You would need home or renters for that. In the event of a claim or loss, the insured is required to do all of the following except. So what do you not need to do? Three of these things you should do and one of them you should not do. We're asking what is the thing you should not do? Um, you do not need to immediately report to the ER. In the event of a claim or loss, you're required to do the following. If your car is stolen, are you even hurt? No. So you do not need to report to the ER. You do need to contact the police if it's an in run. You do need to tell the insurance company as soon as possible. And you do need to protect the property from further damage. If you got hit in the middle of the road, you got to move the car over. That's what they mean by protect the property from further damage. Get it out of the way. Um, you, what you don't need to do is report to the ER because you may not even be injured. And even if you are injured, you don't have to immediately report. What are per person limits? Um, what are per person limit? Yes, nine. Max available for one person. I was checking the Facebook comments. Somebody can't get in. I'm so sorry. Uh, max available for one person. Yeah, per person is how much each individual person can get in coverage. I'm in a 1530 state and I drive to a 2550 state. What will happen? So my limits in one state are 15,000 per person, 30,000 per accident. And I drive into another state where it's 25 per person, 50,000 per accident. What will happen? Nothing, nothing will happen unless you crash. Nothing will happen unless you crash. If you're, if you have 1530 and you drive into a 2530 state and you never crash, why would it need to change? It doesn't. But if you crash, then it would bump up. And the rule for the coverages is whichever state is better, whichever amount of money is better, you will take that amount of money. And it, the insurance company is like, a lot, as long as you do, what your state says, if you go into another state who has a higher minimum and you crash, we'll just bump it up to what that state says, but only if you crash. So be, pay attention to the questions on this. If you have to crash in order for the coverage to go up, because what are you gonna do? You call progressive, I just transferred to the Texas. I was driving in Arizona, I just got to Texas, increase my coverage. You don't need to do that. They will only do it if you crash. General conditions on a PAP include which of the following except. So conditions are rules. Conditions are rules. Three of these are rules and one of them is not a rule.
Uninsured motorist is a coverage, not a rule. What is a rule is that changes can only be made by endorsements. Insurance companies are allowed to subrogate, which means going after the responsible third party and no coverage if the insured has made fraudulent statements. Those are all true. Those are all rules. Uninsured motorist is not a rule. It's a coverage. It's a coverage type. It's not under conditions. So it's a weird question, but I've seen it before. So I like to prepare people for it. What is per occurrence? What does that mean? Sublimit of liability for each incident, yes. So per occurrence, your, your total policy has like an aggregate, which is the ultimate amount of money available on the policy. But then each accident gets its own set amount of money and that's the per occurrence. So like every time you have, it might be like 25, 50, 25. That's a split limit, but that would also be your per occurrence limit. So every time you have an accident, 25, 50, 25 is available. You crash again, 25, 50, 25 is available. You crash again. 25, 50, 25 is available. That's how much money you get for each accident. So it is a sub limit of liability. The big liability is the aggregate. I get a million dollars on my auto, but when I crash, I only get this much. And when I crash again, I get exactly that much. And when I crash again, I get that much. It's kind of like saying the test or the policy is like uh, a day, like one day, and then a per occurrence is an hour. And then per person is like a minute. It's like you're slowly breaking it down. So per occurrence is a sub limit. It's the only one that has sub limit, by the way. So you have to know limited liability, split limit, per occurrence, combined single limit. When you find a word like sub limit and it's only with per occurrence, that's how you remember. So per occurrence, sub limit, per occurrence, sub limit, per occurrence, sub limit. What is part A on a PAP? Part A liability, yes, part A liability. What are split limits? Separately stated, split, separate, split, separate, split, separate. A split limit is saying you get this amount of money for each person, you get this amount of money for the total bodily injury, and you get this amount of money for total property damage. You're splitting it up by person and by bodily and by property. Separately stated limits for each thing. What is part F on a path? General provisions, general provisions, yes. So part E and F are not tested very much and they're not even like an actual coverage. Like part A liability, part B medical, part C uninsured motorist, part D damage. E is duties and F is provisions. They're not even actual coverages, they're more like rules. What is part B on a path? Uh, medical payments, yes. Part B medical, part B medical, part B medical. All right, last question. When you acquire a car and you haven't called to add it to your policy yet, how many days do you have liability coverage? Not full coverage, liability. So don't choose four. Don't choose four. That's for full coverage. It is 14 days, yes. So when you have a car and you get another car, liability will automatically transfer for 14 days. 
without having to call and add it. You get four days of full coverage too. And then, so that, that would be the damage to your auto for the first four days. Then you have liability for 14 days and they overlap. So for the first four days that you get a new car, you have full coverage and liability. And then the full coverage goes away and you get liability for 14, for 10 more days after that. And I do, I think I talk about that in one of my YouTube videos. All right, so let's see how we did. Third place, me, woo, me. Second place, Jen, congrats. And first place, Ray, woo. All right, and how do we do in total? 43%. So um, if we had more time, we'd actually play this again, but we gotta be done. Um, what I wanna do, I have a class this Saturday. So I am teaching a four hour class this Saturday. <laughs> and you guys can join and you can buy your ticket here. I need to go, I need to do like a video and talk about all the things about my, um, what I'm offering. Okay, so in the chat box, I'm dropping the link for a four hour property and personal lines class. And I will teach the most tested things. So the thing, again, multiple experience, multiple years of experience working for some of the biggest insurers in the world with high percent pass rates. I know what I'm talking about. Book that class, get yourself a first time pass or a next time pass. So that's the link to buy it. And then I'll make sure I drop it in the Facebook. And then if any of you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, like to secure, I want that pass, um, you can email me at insuranceexamqueen at gmail.com. There also is an audio option. So like on my website, I love you honey. Um, on my web, you guys can still see my screen, yes. Um, if you go to my website, the first thing right here is Royal Treatment Audio Support. This is where you can talk to me throughout the day as you're studying and you have seven days. So like if you're either at the beginning of your studies or at the end, or if you want to get it all done in one week, we can do that. You have access to talk to me all day long. I explain things to you. I give you, I give you explanations. I give you memory tricks, all kinds of stuff. And then you would also get 90% off on whatever bundle there is. So I'll drop that link in the comments as well. But that's not, that's not like the, the monthly. That's just for seven days for audio. If you want to work with me for a monthly, like up to a month, we can do it as fast as you want. But if you're like, Melissa, I want you to tell me exactly what I need to do, exactly how to do it. I want you to tell me when to do my quizzes, what quizzes I need to pay attention to. I want you to explain this material to me. I want you to meet with me a few times. I want you to make sure that I pass the first time. If you want to do that, that's $9.97 a month. And we can need, that could be for one exam, four exams, whichever exams you need. Um, you got to email me for that one because I, I want to check your state and make sure that I can fully help you. So if you're interested, that's the royal treatment. That's the one every, everyone who has gotten it so far has passed the first time. Everyone who's gotten it has passed the first time. So I'm not guaranteeing, but the evidence is there. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to say, I said that to one person. That's 997. But again, that's the opportunity to work with me for up to a full month. You have full access to me. You'll have the audio support. And I will also be guiding your studies and be available to meet on Zoom. I even take, I even take some of the practice tests with you to explain the answers. And you just know going in that you're going to be able to secure that pass because you worked with me closely to get that done. So email me if you're interested in that and turn to exam queen. And then I hope to see a bunch of you on Saturday. So on Saturday, we're having that class. The ticket is $55 for four hours. I used to charge $55 for one hour with me. You're going to get four hours for $55. So it's an amazing value. And we're going to learn all the big stuff that we're going to be testing out. And it'll be live, so you can ask me questions. It won't be a recording. It's going to be live. So you have all the opportunity to ask me questions, to talk out loud, all the things. So that's the link in the comments. So if you have any final questions, let me know. But we're going to be, um, that's it. And all of my stuff is available at the Podia site, as you saw. So that, if I'll drop the main link of the Podia site there. Any final questions, let me know. Okay, I had a question. Yep. Did 
because this Saturday I am triple booked. Do you have another date coming up for live um, classes? And then you said nine ninety seven, like nine dollars ninety seven cents, or what was that? A thousand dollars, nine hundred and ninety seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I thought I, I was just like, wait a minute, that's no, no, deal. no. You're yeah. Um, so that that's to that's like I like to call it the six figure agent package. If you are ready to sell insurance and make six figures out the gate then be ready to make a thousand dollar investment in your studies and be that energy, the energy behind saying, I am ready to pass my exam the first time and be a six figure agent. That's the kind of energy. That's the kind of people who buy the Royal treatment with me when they know that they're going to go out, they're going to go sell. They're like paying $900 is easy because I'm about to make commission check after commission check after commission check. And all I got to do is pass this test. And she's going to make sure I pass it the first time without wasting time, without overwhelm, without worry, without doubt. That's the people who sign up for the 997. And that's working with me for up to a month. And we can do one exam, four exams, three exams, whichever exams you need. What From what time? Oh, the class on Saturday is from 1 p.m. Pacific, which would be 4 Eastern? I'm so bad at time conversions. So you got to check it yourself. <laughs> but it's 1 p.m. Pacific time to 4 p.m. Pacific or 1 to 5. It's four hours. Starts at 1 p.m. Pacific. So you have to do time conversions. But if you buy it, the Zoom link that you click on will have your time because it will adjust for you. Any other questions? Hi, Any Melissa. Ditch out if you're good. Oh yeah. What was the what was the next date for that that four hour class? That was I don't date? have a date. I rad I randomly set them based on my schedule. I um I am gonna get to the point where I have a more consistent calendar, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, but ideally, there's actually I actually kind of have an idea where it's there's so many of you. God, there's forty of you right now. Like. If we were to run, like if we were to do a class where instead of like one four hour class, if we were to like meet a few times throughout the week and you were to pay a ticket for that and you would be like in a class setting, what would be the value of that for you? Like knowing that you could meet with me like four times while you're studying in a classroom setting, what would be that value for you? That's something I'm making up. I'm just like, like, that would be cool. Like a cohort almost. Like I take a group of people, they all, you all sign up at the same time. We all meet, you know, three to four times a week, secure your studies, and then you take the test. That might be something that I'm working on. But as of right now, I don't have another date. However, this class will be recorded and then that recording will be available for sale, just like all my other stuff. Hi, Melissa. So I have a quick question. Um, I bought your course, um, the $111 course, and I just take, I just took my test. Um, I needed 88 questions to get correct to pass, and I got 81, so I failed. Okay. So um, I did fairly well in all areas, so I'm really not sure what to study. Um, can, I, can I see your score sheet? I just emailed it to you when you put Perfect. your email. Okay, so the email, I'm checking my emails now. I, I have a backlog of emails. I just came home from a vacation. And there's a few emails I got to get through, but I will look at that and then direct you to which chapter. Um, and then a lot of, um, and I want to stress my $111 is not a course. It's recordings of prior classes. You right. still well, need a state approved course. Um, but if you, if a lot of people need to rewatch it like a few times and it's able to lock in. But if you, if you send me your score sheet, I will let you know which, which ones to focus in on. Um, and then some advice and guidance on how to lock that in. And then also a lot of it could be your mindset. So make sure that you're in a, a positive mindset heading into the exam, that you feel good. Um, there's going to be doubt and worry and stress, but just like, no, I listened to Melissa. She told me all the materials. She helps people pass the exam. I got this and just kind of have like a positive, you know, energy to it. And then as you're answering questions um, and you're like, oh, I got that one wrong. I actually, I watched, I watched someone take a test and I was absolutely silent the whole time they took it. And I watched them take it. And it was like a certificate test. When she got a question wrong, she would go, oh man, she got a question, right? Didn't even acknowledge it. Just boom, 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 went fast, went forward on it. And, um, 
I was like, whoa, why are you beating yourself up when you get one wrong? And then completely not even caring that you got one right. I was like, you need to flip that. You got to celebrate that you got it right and ignore that you got it wrong. So when you're taking the state exam and you're like, oh, I don't know that one. Don't carry that energy. Be like, oh, I'm allowed to get so many wrong. That's okay. Move on. The next question. Oh, I remember that. Melissa said coverage E doggy and the doggy bit them. So that's coverage E. And then you pick that answer and then celebrate that answer. And that will give you a more you know, positive energy leading to securing a pass. But I will give you direct guidance if you send me that email. Um, and I'm going to be answering all my emails right now. So if okay, you have emailed me and you're waiting for a reply, just give it a minute. I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. Do you suggest counting questions? Because that's actually what I did. I knew I had to get 88 right. I counted my questions that I knew I got right. I got 50 right exactly. I knew that because I knew they were right. I and think, so I chanced the rest of them and I still got seven that I needed to get to pass. I mean, if, I mean, if you want to, but like you're, you're, there's questions that you'll get right that you don't know you got right. I'm saying celebrate the ones you definitely know, but there's so many, cause that could actually mentally mess you up. Like, oh my God, I only got 50 that I know for sure. So that means I got some wrong and I might fail. Like, I think that could put in the wrong mindset. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions, you guys? Like I said, I'll be getting the email soon. All right, all right. I'm, I'm I'm out of here. Um, email me. Let me know if you need any help. See you all on Saturday. Get those tickets. Um to attend that four hour class. And this is super exciting. All right, bye everybody. Thank you, you're welcome. You. You're welcome, thank you.